Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is part, this is the second game of the second set of NA Team Battles from August 21st. Left hand corner, this is Ascension by the way, left hand corner of Striker starting as the Purple Zerg, bottom right hand corner. We have Raz starting as the White Protoss. And actually out of all the matchups, typically I feel like Raz does pretty well against Protoss. At least that's, I've seen him do some fancy and interesting things in some of his versus Protoss matchups. Striker, of course, a formidable opponent. Striker, I've really enjoyed his playstyle as of late, particularly through this series, and I am glad I've gotten these replays. I just love the fact, I just like how he kind of moves into a more macro, responsive, kind of, it almost reminds me of, uh, I don't know, some sort of martial arts style. What's the word I'm looking for? What's the style I'm looking for? It, not judo. Maybe judo? It's where you're using your opponent's energy against them. And I feel like that's what he kind of does with his Zerg play, or what he's trying to do with the Zerg play, where he kind of... He has kind of a softer, wider catch radius, but he's still kind of going for those contains, still inviting his opponent to make mistakes and kind of using their momentum and the decisions that they're making against them in a very interesting way, at least. And that, at least as far as what I've seen thus far, and I've really enjoyed uh, just his execution of that in particular. Raz going ahead and opening up with that gateway play. It looks like we are seeing some form of Overlord first play. It looks like we're going to see a 12 hatch. And is Raz going to get the first scout off? It looks like actually he's going to the north. So. Not an emergency situation, but this is oftentimes where the Zealots can end up their most effective, in my opinion, with against the 12th hatch play, where they can force a lot of early Zerglings, maybe even get a drone kill or two, and kind of fold back and... Uh, actually, is that pylon placed in such... I think that pylon's placed in a way where it'll... It's not out of the... It's out of the Nexus way. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that for the moment. But, so Raz, going to that top corner, finding nothing, knows where his opponent is. Spawning pool is gonna be dropped momentarily for Striker. But we already have an initial zealot being built. It should be able to get out towards this base. And depending on the number of Zerglings, this is kind of the dance these days of Protoss versus Zerg with these gate openers, is how many Zerglings can you fo force your opponent to build? Can you still seal your front door with... Uh, actually, like what Raz did in a previous match, where he opted to actually build a Cybernetics Core on his front door rather than his Forge once he bought himself enough time, because that allowed him to get that Weapons 1 a little bit undisturbed. Especially going up against like typical 973, it looks like Striker is opening, is planning on opening some sort of three hatch play. So that initial probe gets into this base. He still hasn't scouted anything. Overlord's making its way this direction. The scout actually running into a zealot along this way. And it's going to go ahead and just ignore all that. Go ahead and plant his six hatchery, rely on zerglings that he's going to have to produce. And Raz already has two zealots making their way to the front. So let's see how many zerglings he can kind of force out here. This is a. I'm surprised that Striker's actually not dedicating more Zerglings, so he's already got six Zerglings producing. Okay, he is going for the fourth set, I take it back. So he is playing very safe. And I think he actually cancelled. I heard I can't or sorry, that was a drone dying. Potentially. I think there was a cancellation somewhere there. So Zerglings out engaging. Great surround there on that initial zealot. That zealot now trying to pull back, but the probe already down. Second zealot making its way into that natural expansion. The Zerglings having some trouble. It looked like for a second Raz wanted to pocket there, but he or just kind of sneak into that mineral line to do some additional damage. But the Zerglings chasing this down. Striker already has that gas up. The additional Zerglings pinning this zealot back. The second zealot initially peeking into that natural expansion, but upon seeing, I guess, the sheer amount of Zerglings that are there on the front, going to instead try to hunt down, try to find that third expansion, I assume. It looks like that Zelt's already been dispatched to the initial base, and it looks like he's going to try to force these Zerglings maybe to trail off, or maybe he just wants to hide this into the corner so he can get a scout further down the line. He does have that forge on the front, and I think that is the necessary play here. Isn't going to have... The second Zelt should be able to get a nice seal, and Striker moving those initial groupings of Zerglings out towards that natural expansion. He's also grabbing speed, actually. He's pulled all... It's, it looks like he's going to go for a three-hatch Zergling all-in, potentially, here. Because he has actually pulled all of his drones off hatchery... Or, sorry, off the extractor here. He's no longer harvesting gas. He is in three-hatch play. Maybe this is just to get more minerals, to get more drones out a little bit earlier. But oftentimes when you see this, it is indicative... Especially with the speed alongside, it is indicative that your opponent is planning on going a little bit more aggressive with, the, like, a Zergling flood or something along those lines. Let's see. I think Raz... The question is, is, does Raz get into the main? Does he see the tech that's pulling? Otherwise, that's going to delay layer tech quite a ways. So this zealot that was yeah hiding to that corner is going to be able to meander in. That drone not able... I was wondering if that drone's going to be able to blockade. But he, this has got to be a big piece of information here for him. Because first of all, he's seeing no layer. And on top of that, I think he's got to see this. No gas. Doing a little bit of harassment. is actually able to get some economic harass. Some zerglings pulling their way back out. 
But this this is an indicator to him that actually maybe he even wants to skip Stargate. Well, Stargate, he's going to be able to take down a lot of Overlords overhead. Because keep in mind, there's just not a lot of gas here. He's actually getting weapons one here. So one Corsair will be the kill below. Because there's going to be very little anti-air to start off for Striker. Actually moving forward with additional Zealots. I feel like this is risky. So that Zealot taken out initially. So it looks like his plan from here is, is let me go ahead and continue to force things. Uh, a fourth hatchery being planted down from Striker. Still no gas, by the way. He's just pressing forward to this third base. And this feels very risky to me. Again, seeing a lack of gas uh, on the front. Looks like an evolution chamber going down, a creep colony. This is a build I have not seen, actually, altogether. Uh, the Zealots have managed to make it into the third. The Zerglings actually flooding that direction. Another Zealot coming off the front. This is an interesting decision from Raz, because I would have been concerned about uh, a lot of Zerglings coming off the front to follow this up, but instead, he's getting aggressive with it. So the Zerglings and the drones doing a drone drill, trying to take care of these Zealots in front. Some nice defense from Stryker, but still getting a lot of economic disruption, still losing several drones here and there. But what this is also doing, this is, is delaying, and this is creating a lot of havoc, and delaying any form of anti-air. It looks like the Spore Colony is up, and the Overlords, you can see, just kind of cr trying to pile around it to try to, uh, to try to provide some form of defense, but that layer also getting scouted by Raz as far as the follow-up. And these Zealots continuing, it looks like splitting up, creating to create havoc at both the natural expansion and the main. So Raz making a game of this, at least thus far, off some, I'm not sure what the kind of odd build from Striker to open. We'll see if Striker is sitting on four hatcheries. He does have the Spore Colony to protect these Overlords, but as far as his additional tech, it's going to be very delayed. The Zerglings, a lot of Zerglings, making their way towards the front. There are two Zealots there and two Cannons. Looks like I'm waiting for additional Cannons, but as things stand, it looks like Raz is going to be able to put Strike in the red. And if the Overlord, this Spore Colony is a little bit of a distance past that natural expansion, he's actually grabbing an additional Hatchery on top of this. If he gets one more Corsair, actually, he might be able to camp just around the overlord spawn points in these larvae and if they're basically the overlords have to be built here and kind of crawl that direction it looks like he is redirecting making his way towards the main if he builds one more corsair and just camps it right here he can actually do a lot of damage over a long period of time and there's still no hydralis den there's still no spire that i'm seeing at any location and still no gas being harvested uh so there's finally the hydralis den at the third hiding that tech a bunch of zerglings here to deal with potential zealots that might be flooding out. I think these zealots are going to have leg speed and level one weapons momentarily. There's a Dark Templar being produced as well. And Raz actually in a pretty good position here. Creep Colony being built. Because honestly, I don't feel like Striker has, uh, with all the Overlord delays, with a lot of the uh, the delay in the tech, it just doesn't feel like he has enough units to really stop a lot of the things that Raz might want to pull out. So the second Corsair moving up. This is going to force two additional Creep Colonies and Spore Colonies. Again, just to force Stryker to kind of shell up and play a little bit more defensively. Now, the question is for Raz. I think he, he's got a, a decent enough attack force. More Zerglings now flooding out. I think he's got a decent enough attack force, though, with level 1 weapons and an Archon morphing in. But he might be able to go ahead and take his third base if he wanted to and play the economic game from there. He's also got that Dark Templar. The Overlords are kind of pinned back, so he's got some map control that he can work with. The Zealots pushing into that gap. Able to take out a large amount of those Zerglings, continuing to flood forward. A Dark Templar is there alongside. I honestly do not want to see that Dark Templar anywhere near uh, the third or this natural expansion because it feels like it just can do a lot of map control and allow Raz to go ahead and get a free third at this stage. He's plopping down a couple piles. He does have the three, it looks like five gateways here in the background. The Corsair's still up, just making sure that there's no fourth base. And Striker sitting back trying to macro up. And this is a little bit, when I said he was going to play a little bit more of a passive style, this is a bit, the, this is kind of the extreme version of this. Let's see if he can go ahead and defend this. This is a big SimCity at the natural expansion. Dark Templar getting pinned back. So kind of a pincer attack across the SimCity. Hydralisks at both locations. The Zealots doing a lot of damage. The Overlords have actually been pushed off that Spore Colony. And Raz doing a bunch of damage, but then retreating, realizing that SimCity is just extremely tight. And I don't know that he even lost any units there. He is starting to set up at that third with his three o'clock base but now striker gonna go ahead and grab his third gas is getting range is starting to build those hydralisks he's getting interesting ventral sacks so he wants to go ahead and potentially go for maybe a drop back into raz's main try to use the distance and speed against him he does have overlord speed as far as a follow-up but things so raz has a good amount of map control. Honestly, I almost wonder if he could take an additional base on top of it, plop a couple cannons down, 
and play from there. That might be a little bit of an overextension, but I feel like this third was even later than he he could have had, I guess, if that makes any sense. He could have taken this third earlier. And I hope that doesn't result in Stryker just bouncing ahead in this match. Uh, just because of a, a bit, because honestly, Raz, it feels like he was just in control for large portions of this map. Overlord's starting to flood out. Additional hatchery going down. So this is going to go up to, what is this? Uh, six hatch. Six hatch, uh, six hatch Hydra with drop. I do like this play from Striker as far as a follow-up. And it looks like the Hydralists are grouping up because Raz, with these three bases and with kind of a, he, he's got a sizable attack force, but the attack force is a bit spread out. And this is a lot of territory to cover to try to defend. And there's big drop areas here that can be plopped down into the main. Range being upgraded to move towards Dragoons and potential Lurker, kind of anti-Lurker tech. Lurker tech is being upgraded about halfway finished, but this, it feels so late for Lurker tech at this stage. The one X factor here is of course going to be these Corsairs. It looks like level one weapons was not fully upgraded, but if these Corsairs can take out those overlords while they're grouped up, that, oof, that Archon just getting assailed. Were these high, is there not Psy Storm? I'm wondering what happened, because there were High Templar there, and that was a good opportunity to drop a lot of Psy Storms. Looks like there, oh sorry, there's a counterattack happening to the three o'clock location. So Striker doing a good job of, looks like the game he wants to play is be where Raz isn't, and kind of harass him along those ways. So the Hydralists were cheating to the north, trying to use some mobility in that regard. A Dragoon somehow wandering out to the natural expansion, getting wiped out there. He, does, he also has some Zealots kind of peeking out uh, from this lo uh, location. So Raz, and still doesn't have this third base saturated, needs to saturate that third base uh, to honestly capitalize on, oh, nice storm there, catching a lot. Catches that zealot, but catches a large amount of these Hydralists, and it looks like that Hydralist force is gonna be cleaned up. 12 o'clock base being snuck, but here comes the big drop in the main from Striker. You can see the units from Raz retreating, trying to get back to this location. The Corsairs were not in position to deal with this. Dragoons dying as soon as they're spawning. And it looks like a, some lurkers being morphed right in the mineral line. And so Striker able to catch, and actually the, they're bunched up, having trouble reinforcing and getting to the main. So big blow from Striker. It looks like not only is he going to be able to completely wipe out all of the probes at the main, he might even get the Nexus as well. Ugh. And that's hard to see because I feel like so much was going in Raz's favor at various points of this match. To lose his main Nexus now and be back to two base versus three. He was able to force a cancellation of that Nexus at the 12 o'clock, but really it just feels like a hollow victory upon losing and just plummeting down to 32 probes comparatively and also potentially going to lose a lot of his tech. Also a counterattack, or sorry, a continuation attack? Not a counterattack. Continuation attack at the 3 o'clock location. Hydra's moving up, picking off the High Templar before they're even able to drop storms. The cannon's down. I don't see any observers here, and there's Raz calling GG. So Striker with a rough, I'm not sure what to call uh, the opening, uh, a bit of a rough opening, able to find purchase and just outmaneuver Raz into the later portions of the game. And uh, yeah, able to take it down. I, I feel like this is part of a learning one, <laughs> potentially for both players. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So yeah, nicely played on Striker to kind of have, I don't know, it felt like a comeback mechanic almost. I like his play in the late game, but man, want to see... Uh, Raz improve over time, and I don't know. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.